Hi, welcome back to another Know-It-All 2013 Autodesk Virtual Event presented by Imaginet Technologies. My name is Mark Flather. I am a senior application engineer with the company. And for the next 15 minutes, we're going to be looking at Navisworks Simulate for manufacturing focus. So here we're going to take a look at what this means for the new product design suite offering, which includes uh, Navisworks Simulate 2013. This was added to the premium and ultimate versions of the product design suite. And primarily it was added here for fast uh, loading of large assemblies for review purposes. It does actually load your entire assembly structure as you see there on the left. So this is great for extremely large data sets. And as a viewer that has a little bit more information and as a null alternative to the DWF format. However, it is a lot more functional and we'll get into that in a moment. It is a large conglomeration of files though. So not only can this be inventor files, but this could also be Revit files. This could be other third-party CAD files as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be Autodesk that loads into this uh, system. There's actually two main formats that here we're going to take a look at. There's the NWD, which happens when files are all merged together into a large format file. And we also have NWFs, which are basically references in to the Navisworks environment. So that way, if the files were ever to change, a new NWF could be reloaded, kind of like an X reference. So it doesn't take as much time to load the entire uh, NWD. You could have just an NWFs referencing it in. What we'll take a look at here, though, is also the larger project management tools that Navisworks Simulate can give you that uh, just a simple viewer and review tool could not. There is actually an additional viewer, though, that is free for external and internal stakeholders. So you can share your NWD, your animations, your timelines, and also your, your review and markups with other third parties or other internal resources. So looking first at the project management tools, one of the most fascinating things about Navisworks is the ability to do 4D simulations. This is accomplished with what's called the timeliner. Essentially, we're going to create tasks such as construction of equipment, temporary demolishing, um, or fold-on demolishing of, of equipment. And we could put this into Gantt charts. And what's great about these Gantt charts is anyone who's ever used Microsoft Project inherently has a great understanding of these. In fact, this will actually export right to Microsoft Project. So here you can do your start and your finish dates. You can put that on a timeline. And you can show your project going through the assembly and disassembly and the overall construction of a, let's say, a very large machine or a very large piece of uh, pick and place equipment. And this can also be exported out to an AVI for video animation. And it can also be viewed inside the, the Navisworks Freedom, which is the free viewer. As far as the other powerful tools that are inside of Navisworks Simulate. We have measuring tools such as converting things to red lines, uh, measuring shortest distance between components. We have text and revision clouds and ellipse drawing for, uh, for markups. We can do comment bubbles as well. There is a full-on animator to, do sa to save your animations to also be viewed in, in the, the Navisworks viewer. The publishing options have a whole slew of different formats we can save these out to. We can take our NWFs and merge them into an NWD, basically combine it to the other Navisworks file. We can also have password protection, so we can say that this is only a viewer that people can look at for seven days and they have to put a password in it, and after that they just can't look at it anymore. We can save things off the 3D DWF to the, to the Autodesk film box or FBX file. Uh, Google Earth, images, other rendered images as well. And there's also a pretty tight Vault integration here as well. So we have the Vault tab integrated with the Navisworks product as well to go with our data management solution. When you start looking at the Navisworks viewer, this is something an internal or external consumer of your data would want to take a look at. And here they can do things like sectioning. So they can actually section an entire a model to see through something to you know, make it more clear to them. Uh, you can actually look do their own measurement tools as well. Uh, as you notice, you can't necessarily redline here, but you do have measurement tools and ab ability to view comments. There is a timeliner playback here as well to go through that Gantt chart we would have created earlier. 
So next up, we'll take a look at some demonstration of the Navisworks product and essentially how well it loads data, because that's one of the, the biggest aspects of this software is how well it works with data, whether it's a, a large uh, single assembly or an entire assembly plant, if you will. We'll look at the Timeliner as well as some of the review and markup tools. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a comparison here with loading up an Inventor data set compared to loading up a Navisworks data set. So I've opened up this large front loader and in the lower right corner of my screen you're going to see my, my total document and my total occurrence count just going up. So this would take a little bit to load as we would expect it to. It's a decently sized complex assembly. Um, this has a couple main sub-assemblies but overall I would call this one perhaps an average sized uh, inventor design. So we're going through a fair amount of component loading. This is the master level of detail so it is going to load everything. Of course you can always load up lower levels of detail if you want to get into a design quicker. But one of the aspects we really want to talk about with this uh, particular software, the Navisworks software, is not everybody will have access to Inventor as an internal or external stakeholder. So we can't always just rely on coming into the Inventor model to investigate it. So here we're going to just turn the model a little bit, get a feel for really what this model is. You can see I got quite a few uh, components in here. I have my display settings set so it, it updates a little bit faster. Plenty of main sub-assemblies here. And I could also control these with, again, different levels of detail to load different things in. I could use substitutes if I want for uh, performance and, and lightweight uh, capabilities. We'll go ahead and close this off. And you'll see my count in the lower right also reducing or dumping the memory uh, off of Inventor. And what we'll take a look at next is how this is brought into Navisworks. So the workflow usage here we're kind of looking at is, let's say perhaps this front loader has to go through a design change. And I need to review that before I start making any changes to Inventor. So I can take this to a design planning meeting to talk about the aspects of this. In our product design suite ultimate launcher, we do have our large assembly review tool to launch Navisworks, or we can start from the application list. Either way we want to start it. So I want to launch up this uh, big front loader so I can talk about some design changes I might want to take place to it. You can see I can load up a NWF or an NWD file. And I can also bring in all these other different types of formats. So we have the MicroStation, we have the uh, SolidWorks, we have the Revit files for integration. Before we get to the front loader too much, I do want to spend a little time just showing you some of the, the grandiose kind of scale you can experience with Navisworks. So here I have some views set up on the right. Standard viewports I can kind of walk through and kind of have my person saved where he's at. And this guy comes with it. This is a third person realistic view. And basically these are just some snapshots I've set up for uh, perhaps different purposes for this building. Maybe this is the building where the front end loader is, is built. You can see these little items on the screen there, those little tiny squares. Those are actually keyframes for my animation, which we're going to show next. We're going to start perhaps animating through these things. We'll go up here to our viewports. You can see I can grab these from up top. On my animations, I do have some viewport animations. And I'll go ahead and do this, uh, this uh, robot blower. So it's just a, a very simple animation of the uh, camera perspective turning. Now in the lower right portion of this screen we also have some other capacity meters and this is how Navisworks measures capacity. You do have a couple meters down there that control um, whether or not Navisworks is trying to feel the, the data crunch if you will. And if it does it actually reduces uh, some of the detail, let's say that's be behind you or too far off in the distance for better uh, performance capability as you're going through here. No one else really does this as well as Navisworks does. There's other companies that uh, have claimed to do 
large uh, detail representations like this, large conglomerations of file data like this, but really in the end, when you look on this scale of system integrators and factory integrators, uh, they all have a CA in Navisworks, irregardless of what other CAD software they have. So lastly, I got one more animation here just kind of flying through the plant. Again, giving some stakeholders a good idea of kind of what this place looks like. I'm going to just go back to the start here. There's also a steering wheel control if you like using the steering wheel. Uh, I can go in here and adjust to fly or walk settings. And you can basically just move your mouse the way you want to move your person. As you can see on the right side, there's also other navigation tools, such as the ability to just stand where you are and kind of look around. This also has the ability to do gravity, and if you were to approach a door, you can actually have a trigger open the door for you as you approach it to walk through it. So we're just going to do a little bit of a look around inside the plant, kind of look up. All right, let's take a look at something else. Here we're going to do an example of a 4D simulation. Here I have one of these assembly lines that was inside that plant just now, or maybe this is just a simple, um, well, I want to call it simple. This is something maybe we built as part of our subcontracting for this building. So what I've set up is a Gantt chart here that shows the construction phase, the tentative or temporary construction to in order to produce something before I can really finish something. You know, maybe I have to move something out of the way during that process. So I can basically go here and hit the simulate button and I'm going to kind of minimize this down a little bit and you can see the start day Sunday 1 30 2011 I know guys I'm living in the past but we can go through here the days and we can see the loader the package stations the construction percentage of each one of these and we can slow that down if we wanted to but basically I'm going through the motions here of what my construction of this line would look like what needs to come in first what needs to come in second what needs to be moved or reposition before something else can come in. So it's basically going through this 4D animation for me. And there I am at the finish of my design. And you can play the storyline backwards if you want. Um, I'll do that in a moment. But here you can see on my configure I have these three different stages that I call this. Back over here on tasks, I can go back here and hit the uh, play backwards and play it backwards again. And what's great about this is once I design this, once I want to tell the, that somebody that I want to do this to it, um, I can basically share this through Navisworks Freedom. They can see this animation for it. They can understand that that's what's going to happen first. That's what's going to happen second in the planning stage. And then there's also, of course, the export to Microsoft project. So now we're back to this front loader and you can control certain things here like some very simple lighting controls and make it look a little bit sharper, give it a little bit of pop to it. Here you can see my entire history tree that was really duplicated from what you saw in Inventor. I can select a component here and it will show me what that is in the tree. So basically we're using that intelligence we have from our, our nice inventor model. If we right click on it, we can actually choose an option called switch back. What this does is it actually relaunches inventor for us, takes us to this design and allows us to say, okay, I want to start fixing that. I want to start updating it. And when I save this, then that NWF file will tell me that that needs to be reloaded and it'll give me the update in Navisworks for me. So here I can come in here and, and modify these files if I need to, adjust them, whatnot. But that's what the Navisworks switchback will allow you to do. So here we'll take a look at some measure tools. Here I'll just do a point-to-point -point measurement. And these are actually pretty nice. You can basically just click a couple points. Let's get in here a little bit more. These can also be accessed from the top in the uh, ribbon as well, but if you want to grab them here, that's fine too. So there I can grab my two measurement points there. 
And I can also convert that to a red line if I wanted to. What that does is it makes it a, a review comment for me. So I'll go up here to review and you can see that uh, since that's still selected, I could have said convert to red line. Here I'm just going to take some more random measurements without converting it to anything just yet. You can see there's quite a few different options here for accumulation measurements, for area measurements. Here what I want to do is get a measurement between these two uh, braces. So I'll do the shortest distance between those. It'll give me a value. I'm going to convert that to a red line and save my viewport for this. So here I can put some text in there. It says, oh, let's type in, uh, check the spacing on the braces, right? So what will happen as a reviewer of this is they switch to that viewport. And at that time, that's when your red line shows up. It doesn't show up as you're viewing and spinning around. It shows up when you switch to that view, that saved viewport. That's when these red lines will be visible to the user of uh, Freedom or Simulate or even to hire Navisworks Manage. Now on this piece here, I want to run the inventor optimization on. So during my design planning stage with my managers, I'm going to say, you know what, this is something I really want to investigate more. I want to run an inventor optimization on this to kind of help reduce weight and, and still not sacrifice strength. So I'm going to put a note on here for our design team that that's what we want to do. So we run optimization on this, say OK. And then may draw in another line that just connects it to that. So again, I can save this viewport, and then whenever the user looks at this viewport inside of Navisworks, they can then understand that. And if you have managers you don't trust with, uh, let's say, Inventor, you can give them freedom, and they can communicate these ideas to their team uh, through the Navisworks products.